Welcome to Gotta Run. Today's show is dedicated to the memory of Douglas Stern because we're going to talk about deep water, deep water running with our special guest, Rob Valentin. He's also an ultra swimmer. Rob, welcome to the show. Thank you, Will. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Rob, let's start by talking about where you were born and raised and a little bit about your childhood and background. Sure. I was, uh, I was born in, in Bronx, New York. I started swimming uh, as a young as a young boy, two, three, four years old, uh, and I grew up competing in the Kips Bay uh, Boys and Girls League in the Bronx uh, as a young as a young swimmer uh, into uh, into high school. Which high school did you go to? I went to Harry Truman High School in in Co-op City. I right. swam there for a little bit uh, for um, till about 1988. Great. And what's it about swimming that, that captures your imagination? Wow. Swimming, swimming is an, an incredible uh, sport. It's, a, it's an incredible uh, life skill. You know, it's something that, uh, that, that can help you overcome so many uh, obstacles that, that have nothing at all to do with the water. So, so is running. <laughs> so is running, absolutely. So it doesn't really depend. Any athletic endeavor probably has very common traits like that. Yes. Now, uh, at some point, you went into long distance swimming. Right. How, what was, absolutely. How did, you, how did you phase into that? Well, you know, it's very interesting. As a as a uh, Kips Bay Boys and Girls League swimmer, I uh, I was kind of the top in my in my age group. Uh, Aside from the Boys and Girls League, there's the USA Swimming League, and uh, I kind of graduated to the USA Swimming League as a as a as an adolescent, and uh, found out that I was not quite as fast as I thought I was. <laughs> I was getting pummeled by the USA swimmers, and uh, uh, as an adult, I started to swim uh, for a master swimming team, and I became interested in um, being more competitive, and I decided to get into long distance marathon swimming, like uh, swimming around Manhattan. And oh, swim, swimming around? Swimming around Manhattan. How there's many a, miles is that? There's a 28 and a half mile swim around Manhattan from, from Battery Park to Battery Park. Uh, I, I never heard of that. I heard of the great saunter, which is a walk around Manhattan, oh, which is wow. 32 or 33 Incredible. miles. Incredible. But the swim is 28 miles. 28 miles around Manhattan. And when did you do this? I did that in 1996, and I did a couple of relays uh, around wait, Manhattan wait, wait, as well. I, I want to cover this. 28 mile race. This uh -huh. is this is sure. fascinating to me. It's, it so probably you, feels like well, running two marathons. How do you make the marathons? transition from uh, uh, from swimming a mile to now swimming 28? You know that's that's a great question. That's a great. It's 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 a really tough transition. It takes a lot of discipline. Uh, it takes a lot of training. Um, I would do a lot of open water swims, which are mile and two mile and three and four miles long. Um, but when it came to uh, something like a marathon swim, you would you would train for months at a time, and you would put in hours and hours in the water. Now, runners have a crew to help them. Do you have a crew to yes, help you swim? Yes, you actually, w when you swim around Manhattan, you need uh, your own boat crew, and it's good to have a boat crew that's experienced b with all the different uh, uh, tides ar going around the city. And uh, I had a great boat captain, and I actually had a, a great friend who I started master swimming with, uh, Karen Einseidler, uh, who helped me. Uh, she had done that race probably three or four times, and she was on my boat and was really a, a great support throughout training as well. Now, when you did this 28-mile swim, it wasn't your first time around Manhattan. How did you practice? You, you, know, you had to find out where these currents That's were. That's so true. You know, actually, one of the first practice runs was taking the circle line around Manhattan just to get a feel for what what the waterways were like. Um, and I can remember swimming. There There were two things about swimming around Manhattan that I remember. One was the uh, the George Washington Bridge, swimming underneath the George Washington Bridge, and and feeling as if it were never going away. It's so every time I took a breath, the bridge was still there. It was like I was moving in slow motion. I couldn't get away from that bridge. And also thinking about what it was like to go from uh, 125th Street and down to, you know, um, you know, 50th Street in five minutes in my car and, and have it take me two and a half hours to get down, <laughs> get down the west side. Oh my goodness. But now in a marathon, you have to eat while you run. Right. 
how do, did you catch fish and eat it? How do you do it when you, when you swim? What do you Actually, eat? you know, you have a crew for that reason, uh, and everyone has a, a different method for eating uh, while they're on these on these uh, swims. I um, I had a mixture of you know peanut butter and jelly and Gatorade and uh, some tea for the end of the race. And oh, oh, in other words, you you swam to the boat, right? And they just. Yeah, actually, swim along with the boat, and everyone has a different method, but I had a stick come out to me with my food on it, because you're not allowed to actually touch the boat. If you touch the boat, you're disqualified. Okay. You can stop, and you can tread water, but you can't actually touch the boat. Okay, you can so, stop, thread, and eat. Right, and eat, and, and eat everything else that comes into your mouth along with the food that you're eating. Now, what about bathroom breaks? How does that work? Um, in a that, you know, I, I think w with training, it's it's actually, um, with training, you get kind of used to, your, your body is, is working so hard, I think um, I, I think you pretty much forget about about bathroom breaks while you're on that in that race. So you don't need to go when you're... I, I don't remember having the urge to go, believe it or not. Okay, but if you did... If you did, well, you know... You, don't, you, know, you went to the... Uh, the <laughs> Uh, that is fascinating. I, I, I didn't realize you did that. Wow. Uh, now, let's see, a marathon, a th three hours is great. Now, for a 28 mile swim, I would imagine that's a, how many hour, oh, days? That's, that? uh, you know, depending on, on the tides, depending on the currents, it's, um, it's eight and a half, seven, eight hours. Is um, that considered a, good, a gold standard? Um, like a three hour marathon? Uh, it, it would be. Uh, it, it depends again on the on the the race that you're doing. Um, the year that I did that race, I was the the second place uh, second place male in my age group, and I was sixth overall. And there were uh, first through fourth were all women. Really? Yeah, winning winning that race. Why that is race why women was, better long? You know, I always I always say it's because they're the stronger sex. I always say that that they're mentally stronger and and physically physically stronger. Because you know, us men we get a little bit of pain and we start crying and whining. So, I, all the women who I trained with yeah. could just pummel me in the pool. Just really? I'll I'll pain you any day. Really? Now, <laughs> do you what kind of what was your outfit? Is it just trunks or did you know you what? Wear? They that's a, that's another great question, Will. You're really good at this. Um, I, I guess it's, they actually you can only wear a suit and a cap. You you can only wear one suit well, and one suit? cap. Uh, a one suit would be either a brief from your hip from your um, waist down to your knees. Or or, um, or a jammer, a, a, or a jam, that would be a jammer or a brief, but um, you a couldn't speedo. wear a wetsuit. No, no wetsuit. Uh, uh, yeah, a speedo. You couldn't wear a wetsuit, and you can you could only wear one cap on your head. Uh, two caps would make you warmer. Uh, obviously, a wet a wetsuit oh, really? would make you warmer and make you float one better cap. in the water. So I mean, the fascinating rules. One cap and one suit. What other rules were there? <laughs> yeah, there's there's that you can't touch the boat. You know, there. Um, other than that, you can do any any stroke. Most people would do freestyle, but. Um, but th those are pretty much the rules okay, of the race. Okay, is there a cutoff? You know, after two days, they come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I believe the cutoff is is ten hours. I, I think is what it is. That's amazing. Um, and then depending on the conditions that they they could call the race, depending on what the conditions are. But there are certain just you like in a marathon. They cancel the race. Yeah, they may cancel it depending now, on the I conditions. I know they do that in triathlons when it rains the night before. Right. It's the same thing if it rains right. the night before. No, not necessarily. It just depends on how rough the water is, or if there's, or or, or how clean the water might be the, the day after a rain that way. But um, for the most part, it goes rain or shine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is fascinating. But how many people did that? Race um, you did it. You know, I think there were over thirty or forty people okay. that year. As it's grown, I mean, that that's a, a long time ago now. It's grown, I mean, to be hundreds of people. I, I believe it is now. Really? Each year, it still goes on here every year in New York City. Um, in June, it is now. Um, really, it, it doesn't get well publicized because I haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, swimming. It, it uh, swimming is is a tough sport for you to to get out and people interested in. You know, it is uh, along. You know, we've had Michael Phelps here in the uh, in the Olympics, uh -huh. and, and that's been great for for the sport. But uh, other than that, it's it's tough to kind of go to a swim meet and and sit at a two, three, four hour swim meet. <laughs> 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 or run around the island. I had plenty of people run around the island and follow me on that race, which was great.
Oh, really? They yeah. just they run it. Yeah, they go around. They meet you at different checkpoints, and you see their signs, and, and they're rooting uh, for you. How long ago was this? This is the, that race was in ninety six, nineteen ninety six. So, were your daughters born by that time? Uh, my first daughter was born in ninety seven, actually. Oh, yeah. So, did you do it again that 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 race? I did it uh, again uh, as a uh, as a relay as a relay person. Each person swam an hour. And uh, my team there, we took first place in that in oh, that excellent. in that race excellent. there. Oh, so, so you could do it solo, right. just like a marathon. Some marathons you could do a relay. Yeah, that's right. So, so that's right. That is fascinating. I, I did not know there was such a thing as a swim around Manhattan. Sure, absolutely. Now you have to pay any tolls. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, I, you know what? Well, someday I'm sure they'll make us pay tolls on but that. But you know, <laughs> what kind of support with the, with the Coast Guard there to protect? Uh, you? you know, the, there. There are cutoff times. They, they don't close the waterways really for you. You just have. To, that's where you need a good, good boat captain and a good crew with you to make sure that they're steering you out of any trouble. And that includes the water, things in the water, other boats, you know, boat traffic. Wow. So now it was thirty of you. So there were thirty boats. Yeah. Out. Each one obviously yes, had to have. Yes, everyone's got to have their own boat, right? Right. Now right. the hundreds. Wow, I got to see this in Yeah, that's yeah. If it, it, I'm sure now, it's grown. Let's let's jump ahead or maybe back. When did you first meet Doug Stern? Doug, Doug. I met Doug in a, in a swimming pool here in Manhattan um, on the pool deck. And I was a, uh, a swim uh, instructor at one of these uh, really big, beautiful locations here in, in Manhattan. And uh, I, was, I was coaching one of my swimmers. And this man comes over to me and says, hey, uh, why, why do you, why do you why are you teaching them to do that? Why don't you teach them to do this? And he showed me a, a drill. And um, I imme we immediately became really good friends. I was captivated by Doug. Doug was, uh, was someone who could, who could sell just about anything. <laughs> he was a true New Yorker. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Miss him very much. Very much. Very Let's much. Uh, bring up a photo of him uh, in a few seconds. Oh, that's him right there. And that's where uh, he had a, a swim. Right. I think in January every year. Every year at Curacao. Curacao. Right, right. Which and is uh, a, one of the ABC islands mm -hmm. and the Dutch Antilles. That's right. And Doug would uh, hold his open water. That's right, open water clinic out, out there. Uh, have you, uh, were you there at, at any time with him? Um, I, I had only been there with him once, and um, it goes on every year. We, um, he's he would go out and take a group of people. Some of them were non-swimmers when they actually started in the beginning of the year. Really? And would take them out onto this open water trip. Non-swimmers? Which is a, some, some non-swimmers ended up going to his. He could sell anything if you could He could sell anything and he could make you do just about anything that you, th that you thought you couldn't do. That's for sure. Wow. So you were there once. What, what year were you? At the beginning, you said? Way in the beginning, way when, I fr when I first met. What year was that? Uh, oh, man. That's... Uh, uh, 97, as a matter of fact. 97. Uh, that's bef after you did the uh, the 28 mile. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's right. So that was a significant right. year because you that's had right. your, your first child. Yeah, that's right. Met Doug Stern. That's right. Wow. That's right. Oh, so so you took an immediate liking and. Uh, and uh, so, what happened next? How we did ended you get up, you know, we we ended up um, teaching together, um, and and Doug was a, a real perfectionist, and um, we had a great rapport. Uh, he enjoyed the way that I coached. We actually met coaching swimming. That's what we actually met doing. And he um, he taught a level one and a level two class in his uh, during his uh, swim camps. And I was one of the only people, one of the uh, only people who he'd, he'd allowed to actually take over a class for him when he was sick, which was very rare. Doug was like, now this never is the sick. swimming class. This was one of the swimming classes. Learn to right? swim or Learn to drills. swim, uh, beginners, um, right. and you connect a lot when you when you teach people, and uh, and we, we had a lot in common that way. And I was um, I was really honored to to work for him. Uh, Took years for him to actually leave me alone on the deck and teach my own class, but but Doug was a perfectionist, and uh, and along that we would do he would do this um, class before or after um, our swim class, which was a deep water running class. Let's let's describe that in detail because sure. a lot of people 
have no idea, no what, idea deep what deep water, water running, running is. is. Absolutely. Well, now, as far as did, did, did Doug invented that? Or? Doug actually, this the the method that that we use, the method that I use is Doug's own method. There are other deep water running programs. There are uh, which are sometimes confused with. Um, water aerobic programs. Mm -hmm. What's unique about uh, Doug Stern's deep water running is one, it's, it's his own method and it's one of the only places where a runner or, or non-runner, but especially those who are runners who are injured, who can't run on the road, um, get a chance to actually get their, their running fix in the water. Um, you're actually standing upright and you're running in place with a belt around your or around your waist. A flotation belt. A flotation belt around your waist. Or two or three. Or two or three, or three <laughs> depending on how comfortable you are in the water. I remember meeting Doug. We, we had a swim class and uh, and he would say, you know, stick around and, and you know, stay here and, and watch this. And I would watch people run in the water and it just looked like the strangest thing, you know. And um, people loved it, and it was great for people. Year after year after year, people would come back. And after a while, I started to take on uh, deep water running classes for Doug as well. And um, well, describe some of the drills. How does how does it start? It it starts out with a warm up. You know, we stretch everything well, out. Before, we, before we, that, you, you put on your yeah. You definitely put on your belt and you or put two on, or three or two or three floats depending then, on how and comfortable then you, then you are. You walk yes, to the deep end. That's right. Your toes. Some people actually jump in. Some people actually jump in these days, but uh, you have a, you wear your belt really tight so that it doesn't move up and down on you in the water. And uh, you get in, we go through a general warm up to stretch everything out. And you're, you're actually you're running in place and you're running against the resistance of the water. So you want to feel uh, really heavy in the water. You want to feel the motions through the water, and it's it's a little unlike running in that you know you're kind of working with a straight leg. You're working from your hip down uh, to your toes, and your toes are pointed, and that's for the resist. You want that resistance against your your joints. Um, other than that, you're running just like you're running on the road, and we we vary the length of the stride, you know, from a power walk stride all the way down to a downhill stride, and we vary the, well, the how hand do, how position. How do you do a downhill stride in the water? You, in the water, a downhill stride is is with your hands sideways, and your your stride length is, is about a foot uh, apart from from your space between your hip and your um, and your feet, just about a foot's distance and your hands are sideways and you're running with a really quick cadence. Uh, are you using your hands as well? You use your hands a lot, actually. I, I talk a lot about using your hands in the water, um, especially when you're going uphill. We do a lot of uphill. We've got about a two-foot stride, and you're really pushing your elbows back the whole time, well, keeping your... How are you your using your hands uphill? Is it, is it? You're, you're, you're getting your elbows back a lot toward the surface okay. of the water, but you're, you're also... You're never doing... You're never... You're kind of... What, what's strange about deep water running in the water is um, you want to feel the resistance against your body. Now, as you get tired doing this, and it happens really quickly, it's a 45-minute class, and you feel... Doug used to say that we, we would run about five miles in that 45 minutes, okay? It's no impact on your body. It's, it's great for your form and your conditioning. It's great for your sore joints. Um, but within that, within about five minutes, as you get tired and your body starts to feel muscles that it's not used to feeling, you start to find ways not to feel the resistance, you know, and like bend your arms and bend is your legs. That, is that considered cheating? That's definitely considered cheating. Not so much cheating, it's kind of, it's, it's your body saying, I'm just not used to this. And, okay. and it's fighting through that and working on, on okay. your form and your and, posture. And your heart rate's going up? Your heart rate's going up quite a bit. So and you're sweating. Did you know you actually yes, sweat in the water? I, I Did you have know to that admit, well? I took deep water running once, <laughs> and I could not believe how much I sweated. That's right. Well, part of my problem was, uh, even though you don't have to be a swimmer, it does help because I was so help. nervous right. with my five flotation belts. Yes, <laughs> right. Uh, I, I do tell people you don't, you don't need to know how to swim to do deep water running. I do have people who come in who are either beginners or not, not fearful, but a little less comfortable in the deep end of the pool. Um, for the most part, they, of course, wear uh, more floats. Um, it's not as simple as that because when you're a little afraid of the deep end, any sudden movements kind of you know yeah, make you, you wanna, nervous. You want to be relaxed, but you want to be relaxed. And usually, after taking two or three uh, sessions of deep water running, it helps people become more comfortable in the water, uh, which absolutely. which helps them start to get into now, swimming. It's a 45 minute 
class, and he just did about a five-mile workout. Uh, is there uh, music going on, or how, how's it going? Is, well, it, uh, is there yeah. somebody, is there a pacer? Or yeah, you know, there's, you know, we, we actually work off, off of a, a, a pace clock, like, a, like as if you're in a, a swim workout. And we do uh, different, you know, training from um, different interval training from long runs, short runs, uh, uphill and downhill runs. Um, and there is music going on. Doug always had music going on also, but Doug was a big, big talker. Doug could, Doug could talk for 45 minutes <laughs> straight and, and, and captivate you. And, and that was one of the challenges I had when I took over for Doug was watching Doug, you know, stand there and be Doug and just realize, wow. I'm well, Doug, Doug was more than a coach. I have to admit uh, he was probably one of the first sports psychologist. <laughs> That's right. Because he was a father figure for mm -hmm. many, many people. Absolutely. And uh, and Doug was also, I, I learned this later, uh, he was what we call a connector. Mm -hmm. uh, and that means he enjoyed putting people together. Right. Uh, as it turns out, I'm a connector. Mm -hmm. That's but, right. Uh, but uh, but uh, we never worked together as mm -hmm. a team in right. that respect. Right. Um, and that's how I know you well is through is through my connection with Doug. With Doug, yeah, that's right. yeah. Uh, I miss him so much. You know, you mentioned injured runners. A, a lot of runners are introduced to deep water running through right. that method. They, yeah. they they injured themselves, but they mm -hmm. want to maintain their aerobic capacity. Right. And this is uh, deep water running is great uh, for that. But it's also uh, there's another reason to do deep water running that's good for swimmers. And uh, you, you, you touched on it, but I want to emphasize mm -hmm. it, uh, and that's to correct you, some of some mishaps in your in your form because yeah. the water for example if you lift your foot and if your ankle tends to turn mm -hmm. either either when you lift or when you forward or backward when you do the water thing it'll straighten that out that's right and a lot of runners have that's that right. problem have that. Mm -hmm. they don't know how to relax their ankle that's right that's right and in the water, you learn in to relax the, absolutely. your ankles because you want to point down. Right, and you actually you you learn to relax everything. Actually, you you, you need to be able to relax to to quit from sinking <laughs> half the time, and it, it actually helps you focus. We were talking about using your arms and and actually keeping your posture, and we t I talk a lot there about keeping your posture in the water. Well, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Your posture, though. How do you how do you maintain your posture from the head down? Did it start with the it's yeah, it starts right here from your head um, in class. Your should be pointing straight to the straight, ceiling. Straight, straight, straight down the middle of your body. And it, for, when people first start doing deep water running, they either move forward or move backward because of poor posture. Either they're leaning forward when they're running or they're leaning backward when they're running. And in deep water running, in order for you not to run into the person in front of you or behind you, because we're all running in place in the, in the deep end of the pool, um, your posture has got to be correct, which is just, you know, your, your um, shoulders in line with your hips. And I talk a lot about uh, strengthening your core and, and squeezing your stomach in as you're running, which helps you keep your, your position and your form uh -huh. there. So, so that helps in your core doing that, that Absolutely. people are running? Absolutely. So it's, uh, it's a great sport. Um, you know, let's talk a little bit more about Doug. We went to his memorial. Uh, ceremony and that place was packed. It sure was. And, and you and you spoke. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a story I wanted to tell about Doug. Uh, it's not as well known because he was a for the New York City Marathon. He was a bandit catcher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at mile, I forget which mile, mile 20 or whatever it is. Right. Uh, if uh, what a bandit was is as a runner that for some reason didn't have their their mm -hmm. bid. Either they tossed it or, or they didn't have one. Right. And he was in charge of, uh, of a team that would pull these runners aside. Anyway, one year, a dear friend of mine, a well-known runner, was hot, and he threw away his bib. And Doug caught him. <laughs> and the funny thing was, the guy recognized Doug, says, Doug, I'm Mark, we met. 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You know, Doug looks at him, I don't care, you're out. <laughs> and Mark <laughs> tried to get away. And, 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 and Doug had a couple of burly cops. And even though Mark was very, very fast, those <laughs> cops knocked him down. And, and he was so upset wow. uh, that he was mad for Doug 
for years. Mm. He couldn't stand the thought of Doug. But anyway, when Doug got sick and he heard about it, he reflected on that. And you know what? First thing he did was to forgive himself. Mm -hmm. It was a very moving moment because he realized that he was holding this thing inside. Wow. And then he forgave Doug. Mm. And, uh, and that was such a beautiful moment. Wow, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, what are some of the challenges that you face now that you, in fact, you inherited Doug's yeah. uh, legacy, you know? You know, Doug was, Doug was a father figure to me. He was, um, he was a, a colleague. He, he taught me so much. Um, uh, deep water running and, and swimming, but actually how to how to try to keep this business going here in the city. Uh, it's always been very popular. Um, at first, some of the challenges were were finding locations and having locations. I mean, uh, you still need a pool to do deep water running. With uh, a deep end. With a deep end, right? Uh, you need that deep end. That's <laughs> that's a big one, and so that that's a challenge there. That's always been a challenge over the years. Um, uh, it's been a little more consistent over the last uh, three years, well, I'd I, say. I know Doug had uh, John Jay. Right. Um, and uh, which which are the other two locations? We're you have now, now uh, I'm still at John Jay. We're at John Jay's same Monday night class that we've had for years and years. Um, and we're on Wednesday night at St. Bartholomew's Church on 50th and Park, and at the Julia Richmond High School on East 67th between first really? and second. Really, Julia Richmond. That's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you so how many days a week do you do? We do deep water running three days a week. Three days a week, Monday. and I've got uh, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights. Okay. Monday, and Wednesday, and Thursday People can find nights. it. By the way, folks, you can find it by going to his website, which is up on the screen. I believe is uh, blueoceanswimming.com. That's correct. I thank you so much for thank you, for dropping by. I appreciate it. This is deep water running by Rob Valentine. He's picking up where Doug left off. We miss him very much. Doug, rest in peace. This is Will Sanchez. I've got to run with Will. See you on your side of the road. important job in a man's life but it doesn't have to be hard all it takes is a few minutes of your time because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life take time to be a dad today